Risa Floor utilizes intuitive floor-by-floor -floor modeling input to design and optimize building systems constructed of composite and non-composite steel, concrete, masonry, wood, and cold form steel. In this video, we'll take a look at the setup and design of composite steel floor systems in Risa Floor. So here I have a multi-story building. We're going to go ahead and focus, though, on a single level, in this case, level two of this building. And before we go ahead and start to do anything to the actual floor plan of the model, I want to jump into the global model settings up here and into the composite tab. So here's where we can see all of our composite options for this uh, given project. So a few of the options here that we can see is, first we can see the angle uh, in which we would consider a beam as orthogonal. So in this case, a 45 degree angle to, for, from a beam to uh, another beam, that beam would still be considered a composite beam. We can also see the angle in which the deck needs to be uh, parallel to the beam in order for it to also consider composite action. Next, we can go ahead and see some of the stud options. So min and max composite uh, percentage, so 25 to 100%. We can see our min and max spacing. So in this case, four and a half inches to 36 inches. We can also see our stud layout, uh, choosing whether we want to do everything as a uniform stud layout or we want to, for instance, on girders, have a segmented stud layout. And then finally, our stud position with inside the composite decking rib at weak or strong. Now, if we wanted to change anything, we could go ahead and save this as defaults and then keep this as our default in our program. I'm going to go ahead and just click OK to exit out. Next, I'm going to go ahead and open up the Draw Beams dialog. And within the Draw Beams dialog, we can see that we have this composite flag. So when we're modeling beams from scratch, we could go ahead and make sure that composite flag is enabled so that when we model those beams, they're automatically composite beams. Additionally, if we go ahead and look at the Infill Beams dialog, we can see that there's a similar composite checkbox to enable the composite design functionality for particular infill framing as well. Also, in a situation like this where we have these beams already defined, I could go into the beam spreadsheet and we'll click on the hot rolled tab and we can see here that all the beams that are marked as composite beams on level two already have that little checkbox enabled. And so if we wanted to, for instance, either select or unselect one, we could do that individually or we could go ahead and use the fill block command to select all of them or, or none of them, for instance. In this particular case, we do have some beams on this floor that are non-composite, whether because they're too short and therefore can't uh, get composite action, or they're part of our moment or brace frame, and so we don't necessarily want those to have uh, composite action because they have some negative moment on them. Now, the next part we need to look at is our deck definitions. So I'm going to go ahead and open the deck definition spreadsheet. And here are our full list of deck definitions. I'm going to go ahead and select this material type for a composite deck and open our deck selection dialog box. And so here we can see the multiple databases that are available to us. So Verco, Volcraft, and ASC databases. I'm going to stick with the Verco or the Volcraft database. We can also set our some of our stud information. So the distance above uh, for the stud height above the rib, the diameter, and also the tensile strength. And then we can select from the database to see the full thickness of slab and uh, decking together. When we close out of the deck definition spreadsheet, the next thing we need to do is go ahead and open up our member design rules. So if I open up our member design rules, I have a design rule already established in this case for our bracing, but I want to establish a new design rule for the design of our composite members. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter here, and we'll just go ahead and call this uh, level two composite. And so this will be specifically uh, for the composite beams at this level that we're looking at. And so just like any other design rule, I can go ahead and set the maximum in depth, the maximum in width, as well as the bending criteria. I'm going to leave all of that information uh, blank for right now. I can also go ahead and set the deflection criteria, which obviously is a big part of our uh, design. And so in this case, we can see by default, we have a dead load ratio, live load, dead plus live load ratio. We can also define our actual deflection, so an absolute deflection. In this case, though, because I'm going to do a composite design, I'm going to go ahead and turn on a deflection criteria for pre-composite dead load. And so let's say that ratio is going to be 240 and so in this case, we can go ahead and do an extra additional check for the pre-composite dead load that we'll have in our composite system. Next, I can go ahead and look at the camber. 
So again, min and max camber defined here, our increments. We can also see our percentage of dead load and then how we're calculating dead load, whether we wanna use the self-weight plus superimposed dead load or just the total dead load. For this particular case, I'm gonna go ahead and say total dead load. Finally, we can see the minimum length of a beam that we would have for camber. So basically nothing, no beam under 30 feet will have a camber uh, designed on it. Okay, so with our design rule set, we now need to apply that design rule to the beams on this given floor. So I'm gonna go back into our draw modify beams and I'm gonna say modify the properties. I'm gonna check on the box for design rules and switch to that level two composite. And then I wanna say apply entries to all selected beams. So I'll say apply here. And then now if we go ahead and double click on any beam here, we can see that the design rule now is set to that level two composite design rule that we wanted. Now, before we go ahead and run our design, let's go ahead and turn on our area loads. So here we have our office area load applied to this level. So if I go to my area load definition spreadsheet, we can see that office area load right now has a post composite dead load, a live, a reducible live load, and a vibration load. And so in this case, because we wanna check our pre-composite dead loading, I'm gonna add a pre-composite dead load of 20 pounds a square foot, and I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing, keep that the same for a post composite dead load as well. This vibration load is what's gonna be used uh, from design guide 11 to design our, our beams with vibration considerations for walking excitation. And so that number comes from design guide 11, but you could change it if you'd like to as well. Now, the last thing we need to do is set up our load combinations. So I'm gonna go ahead and open my load combination generator and we can establish both strength and serviceability combinations, but we need to make sure that we have our composite combinations, both pre and post composite on. So I'll click to generate those for strength and then come back in the generator and generate those for service as well. And so now if we look at our combination set here, we have 18 different combinations. They're all being solved. We can see our pre dead load combinations. And we can also switch to the design tab to see which combinations are our serviceability combinations as well. Now at this point, I can go ahead and run the solution. So the solution obviously is just going to do a design and optimization of all of these beams based on the uh, design rules that we had set and the loading that we have established in this particular model. And so now we have our design results at this particular floor, and we can go ahead and start to evaluate really what Risa Floor has come up with from an optimization standpoint. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and open up the code check spreadsheet. And so the code set check spreadsheet shows um, our beams on the floor here. So we can see our size, uh, the studs that are being applied, uh, the camber of, of the beams. So we don't really have any camber. Most of our beams in this particular case are less than 30 feet. So we're not doing any cambering. Uh, we can see our bending and deflection and our shear uh, coefficient or, or checks. We can also go ahead and open up the beam vibration spreadsheet. So if we look at our vibration spreadsheet here, we can see the information that we use to calculate at each beam to calculate the different things for the, the moment of inertia, for the panel weight, and also for the acceleration as a fraction of gravity here. And this is the value that we're gonna to use to compare to um, the, the code value from Design Guide 11 when we do our vibration check. We can also see this graphically. So if I wanna go over to our model view options, I can choose to show our vibration acceleration here graphically. And so we can still see the design result, but here we get our little legend here. So we can see based on the color coding, our vibration acceleration. Next, let's go ahead and look at a detail report. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a detailed report for uh, a given beam. So let's go ahead and say maybe this 18 by 40 here, that's got a few point loads on it. So let's expand this detail report a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and look at a load combination. So we'll just choose a load combination here. And so we can see just like any other member in Risa Floor, we've got our loads applied, our shear and moment diagrams, as well as our deflection. If we start to scroll down, we can see the additional uh, loads and reactions. Finally, we can see the design rule that we had applied. And then we come into our shear capacity check, our non-composite bending check, and then our composite bending check. So we can see that composite bending information, all the information calculated for the definition of studs and also the composite section calculation. And then finally, we see our deflection criteria. So here's our deflection. So we have that pre-dead load deflection, right, that we added, dead load, live load, dead plus live. We have all that information applied. Plus, we also have our vibrations. Again, using that value of acceleration as a fraction of gravity, we have that value there. And so we can see all the information defined. Now, 
In addition to our detailed reports, we also have the design member tool that exists for Steel members. And so if I go ahead and click on the design tool, I'm gonna to select that same exact member. And so here, this is basically just a redesign tool that allows us to kind of work through and see exactly how Risa Floor came up with the design results that it did. And so in this case, for this 18 by 40 member, we can see the bending check, shear check, deflection ratio, and maximum deflection. And that all is the same information directly from that detailed report is also directly available in our spreadsheet as well. We can see the design rule and we could change the design rule to see how that would change our design. So if we had different design rules, we could see that. We could also change to segmented studs or from uniform studs. We could turn it a non-composite member if we wanted to. We could also see, okay, in this case, why did it design an 18 by 40? So if I switch to an 18 by 35, we can see that, oh, well, we failed in our deflection limit ratio. We don't have that same deflection capacity as the W18 by 40, and we would also need additional studs. And so exact, we can see exactly why this was designed the way it was. But if you wanted to, we could use the redesign tool to kind of pick different shapes. So we could say, oh, well, maybe I wanted 18 by 55 because of some connection or something like that. We could go ahead and see how that would work for our bending checks, shear checks, and deflections. With the floor design now complete, the model can be transferred into Risa 3D for lateral load application and design. For more information about Risa floor, including the design of composite floor systems, please visit risa.com.